Hey folks, uh, looks like we have an upcoming test on modules 21, 22, 23. I know your, your uh, practice test says 20, 22 and 23, so sorry. This is my fourth time I've tried to record this. I have went through a couple mistakes. and Anyway, so let's get go ahead and get going here. So sorry you guys, I have a headache too. We're in the COVID uh, uh, virus thing, so I'm, I'm doing this for my kiddos at home. So... Uh, it'll explain so like I, I don't put degrees on the answers when they are degrees so here for example find the sum of the interior angles so it's a regular uh, dodecagon I'm sorry this should say dodecagon d o dodecagon dodecagon is 12 sides and if you don't know that it's 12 sides then we, we just add up the uh, the number of sides and then and then uh, so for example we'll start here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so that's what twelve sides are dodecagon so we're going to do uh, n minus two times 180 so n minus two times 180 it's going to be 12 minus two times 180 so 12 minus two is a is 10 10 times 180 is um, 1800 so so since it's regular you guys regular it says right here it says a regular right here sorry uh, means all the sides and all the angles are equal. So if uh, all these equal angles add up to 1800, then we just take 1800 and divide that by 12. So if we do that, then um, 1800 divided by 12 gives us um, uh, 150. Okay, I'm going to quit uh, pasting. I'm doing copy paste. I'll do it one more time here. So okay so find the measure of one exterior angle well an exterior angle I'm gonna count this guy right here as my interior angle of 150 so an exterior angle forms a straight line so 150 plus what gives me a straight line well remember uh, straight lines add up to 180 so if we just, just subtract that now if we didn't know the interior angles we could do this we can do uh, all exterior angles no matter how many sides it has uh, adds up to 360 so 360 divided by those 12 equal angles will also get us that 30 either way is okay okay so here we go a polygon has an interior angle sum of 2880 degrees how many sides does it have so n minus 2 equals uh, times 180 equals that 2880 you can distribute the 180 through or I'd rather just divide both sides by 180 and so we get n minus 2 equals 16 so there's 18 sides I just plused 2 to both sides that's the easier way okay so here find angle s so we got to find x first you guys so this exterior angle equals the sum of these two guys and these are called remote interior angles so 8x equals this plus this so that's what I'm gonna do okay so if we combine like terms we get 8x equals 80 plus that 4x subtract 4x from both sides and we get x equals 20 alright so it says find angle x or find angle s so we have to plug in 20 right there okay a lot of kids are gonna stop right there but just just go back and read any kind of x problems just think x is might not be the answer so plug in x right here so 4 times 20 plus 2 that's what we're gonna do so uh, we'll get 82 okay so angle s equals 82 degrees all right and I did not put the degree symbol there because um, we are going to be doing our test coming up in a couple of days and um, uh, I'm not worried about the degree sign on that I'll just uh, ask you what's uh, angle s so please just put in 82 on the online test that you're going to do and if we're back in school then then don't worry about that okay all right, so for numbers 6 through 8, use the figure given. So an interior angle. Okay, so an interior angle are all of these inside angles, 1, 2, and 3. This is an exterior angle, and this says remote interior angles. Okay, so these two form a straight line. They form a linear pair. So the other two interior angles are called the remote interior angles, okay? So these are the remote interior angles. These are the interior angles, and then this is the exterior, okay? So here we go. There's the, the answers for that. All right, so here we go. We have this polygon here, and find angle U. So we're going to do N minus 2 times 180 find out what they all add up to so let's go ahead and do that so we get um, uh, 540 so let's add them all up to 540 
and combine like terms, 2.5 plus 2.5 plus the 1x is, is 6x, and then 90 and 90 is 180. And then uh, subtract 180, we get 360, so divide, we get 60. Oh, my goodness, that's another typo. Okay, so this should be 60. Okay, I think I fixed everything else. Okay, so um, u is the same as x, that equals 60 right there, okay? All right. All right, so this one says find ang if uh, find j if h is 72. Now, the, if we didn't know this, we wouldn't know what to do. But these two angles are equal, so I'm going to let this be x. So this will be x, and this will be 72 right there. So x plus x plus 72 will give us 180. So we get 2x uh, subtract 72 from 180. We get 108, so 54. So that's what j is, is 54. So is i. Okay? Okay, so let's see. So here again, we have another triangle. So add all those up to be 180. And we get uh, 3 and 3 is 6, plus 5 is 11, plus 40 to both sides. And 11 times 2 is 22. So 11 times 20 is 220. So x equals 20. All right, so if we plug in 20 right here, 3 times 20 is 60. That's 60. So this has to be 60 also. So it's an equiangular triangle, which means it's an equiangular equilateral triangle. So if the, all the sides are equal, I'm going to let them be y. So y plus y plus y is that 72. So if we do that, then we just say 3y equals 72. So y equals 24. So that's what yz is. All sides are 24. Okay, so state whether the, if they can make triangles. Okay, so the triangle inequality theorem says that you have to add two sides together and it has to be greater than the third side, okay? So is 4 plus 4 greater than 8? No, it equals 8. It has to be greater than. So this is a no. It must be greater than. Okay, this is when I was standing in class and I was holding up a, a ruler on one side and a stick on the other side and probably a yardstick in the middle and you'd see that they, they wouldn't make a triangle if I held it, you know, the ruler and the stick. They wouldn't make the triangle because they, they weren't long enough have to be greater than, okay? Uh, how about 2 plus 9? Is that greater than 10? Yeah, this is 11, so 11 is greater than 10. 3 plus 6 is 9, greater than 8. So no, yes, yes, that's what that's going to come out to be, okay? Okay, so here we go. So here we have this triangle. Arrange the angles from least to greatest. So, so how it goes is smallest angles opposite the smallest side. So this is definitely the smallest side right here. So this smallest side goes straight across. L is the smallest angle, okay? And then the next one says uh, that the largest side is opposite the largest angle. So this is the largest side, so that's opposite this. So that's the biggest angle, okay? I know this is not a word, but the mediumest angle is opposite the mediumest side. So it goes like this, you guys. So smallest angle is uh, angle L. The mediumest angle is angle, angle K. And the largest angle is angle J. So there they are in order from least to greatest. Okay. So here we have a triangle. They didn't draw it for us. So we're going to draw just any generic triangle X, Y, Z, or W, X, Y, sorry. And then put in x equals 40, y equals 60, w equals 80. So it doesn't matter. x, y, w. My goodness. This should be a w. Sorry about that. Let me fix that. Okay. And um, uh, let's see. So which has the least measure? The one that's opposite the least side. So even though that's going to change to z again, so this is going to, um, so this is the smallest angle, so that means this is the smallest side. So I'm going to have to change my answer right there. So, uh, y, w, sorry, this should be a w right here. I used to have a principal that uh, used to say w, y, w. Way back in the beginning of my teaching. Okay, so anyways, y, w is the smallest side. Okay, so here we go. So a uh, triangle has lengths uh, 13 and 39. What are the possible side lengths uh, of the third side? So if we add them and subtract them, that'll give us the boundary. So the third side has to be less than 13 plus 39, and it has to be greater than 13 or 39 minus 13. So 
If I add them, that's my biggest boundary, and subtract them, that's my smallest boundary. So on the test, I might say uh, which, uh, which length could be a possible length of the third side. I'd probably list 26 and 52. Those would be no-nos. And then any side in between, like 27, 28, 29, or even 50.9 or 51.9, that would be less than 52. Okay, anything that's in between that would be an okay answer. Okay, so just a little hint. All right, so, okay, so here you guys, um, what's the length of JK? So we got to figure out X. Okay, so this tick mark and this tick mark says midpoint. This double tick mark and this double tick mark says midpoint of this side. So this is called a mid segment right here. Okay, so mid segments are half as long as the third side. Okay, so this is a half of this, or we can say this is twice this. I'd rather do that so I don't have to deal with fractions. So 10x equals 2 times 6x minus 4. So distribute that 2 through, and then I'm going to flip that around because I like to have the bigger x on the left-hand side, so 12x minus 8. And then I'll subtract 10x from both sides and plus 8 to both sides. And so 2x equals 8, so x equals 4. Now x is not the answer. It's asking for the length of jk. What's the length of jk? So we've got to plug in x equals 4 right here. So 6 times 4 minus 4. Okay, now if this was a multiple choice, x equals 4 would probably be one of the incorrect answers. Okay, so if we plug in 4, we get uh, 20 right there. Okay. All right, almost done. So fill in the blanks uh, with the correct definition. So if two or more lines intersect at the same point, that, that word is called concurrent. Okay, perpendicular bisectors, they intersect at the, the circle that goes on the outside, which is called the circumcircle, so it would be the circumcenter. Medians intersect at the centroid, and altitudes intersect at the orthocenter. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead. So, so what's the location of this orthocenter? So that's where the um, the altitudes intersect. Uh, did I say orthocenter? This should be circumcenter. My goodness, what's the matter with me? Circumcenter. If it says orthocenter, let's change it to. So circumcenter is where the the perpendicular bisectors intersect. I'm sorry, you guys. So. So, oh, a lot of mistakes today. So, circumcenter. So, let me fix that. So, the circumcenter is where the perpendicular bisectors intersect. So, this should say circumcenter. Circumcenter. Okay. So, I can't do copy paste on both. Oh, maybe I can. Let's try that. Let's do that. Copy. Okay. So, anyway, so, so if we just draw. Uh, the perpendicular bisectors through the midpoints right there. Okay, so so this is a length of five. So if I go two and a half, that'll get me that. This is a length of seven. So if I go three and a half, that'll get me that. And then just draw the perpendicular bisector. So right through there and right through there. And the circumcenter always intersects on a right triangle on the hypotenuse right there. So if we draw, so it's always going to be the midpoint of the hypotenuse. So we can do that also, you guys. So the midpoint of the hypotenuse is going to get us that right there. Okay. So this should say the circumcenter is located at. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Does your math teacher ever make mistakes? I do all the time, every day, several times a day. Okay. Here we go. All right, so in triangle PRT shown, PS is 12. Okay, so PS is 12. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that in there. This is going to be 12. UV, so this little piece, this little dude right here is 2.7, and ST is 7.3. Let's go ahead and put those in right there. Okay, so now since um, um, uh, these are, uh, it looks like the centroid, because centroids intersect at the midpoint, so this equals this, midpoint, these two dashes equal these two dashes, so this is the midpoint, similarly, three dashes, three dashes, midpoint right here, so this is the, the centroid right here, so the centroid goes like this, this is half of this, this guy is half of this, 
this dude right here, Q, what is that? QV is half of VT. Now, if they give us the whole length right here, then the small piece is a third of the big piece. Okay, so it just depends on what they give you right here. So, so if I know this length right here, then this is going to be a third of that. So this is going to be four. Okay, so if this is 7.3, that's 7.3. Okay, if this is 2.7, this is half of this guy. So double it, give me this guy right here. Okay, so well, it gave us too much information right here. So anyway, so um, RV, you guys, is going to be twice uh, the 2.7 or 5.4. Okay, PV, okay, so PV, remember it goes one-third and then two-thirds, or once you get one-third, then double it, that'll get us the other piece right there. So this little dude is going to be, uh, this guy is uh, is a third of 12, so if that's, that's going to, a third of that is four, so this must be double that, so this is going to be eight right there. Okay, all right, almost done, you guys. All right, so here, so so right here, all these markings right here, this marking, these markings right here says angle bisector, so this is the angle bisector, and then this right angle just says distance, so this distance is equal to this distance. Any point that's on the angle bisector says that this piece equals this piece, and that's what we're going to do right there. Okay, so 7H minus 5 equals that 3h plus 5. I'm going to add 5 to both sides, so 5 and 5 is 10, and subtract 3h from both sides, so 7h minus 3h is 4h, so divide by 4, we get 5 halves, or 2.5, so what's the value of xz? So we're going to plug that into 3h plus 5, so 3 times 2.5 is 7.5, so 7.5 plus 5 is, is 2.5. All right, you guys, hey, good luck on your test. Take care.